The following show features episodic breakdowns of Jackass, either performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. For your safety, avoid listening to this podcast at all times. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth. I'm Jason Wellwood. And I'm Chris Aaronworth. Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass. It's the podcast where we're on a path of destruction through every single episode of Jackass. We're three lifelong fans of the show, reliving the belly laughs, bad ideas, and broken bones. Today, we're coming at you with something a little special. Everybody's been waiting. We got 4.5 on the on the table today. We do. Uh, I couldn't help but think, um, you know, there's been so much hype. We we were we were so curious as to what this was going to entail. Who was going to be involved? Was Bam going to show up? Who knows? Um I remember turning this on when I was watching it just a few days ago, and I the first note I have is... Oh, I f- wait, real quick, Mikey. Yeah. Real quick, sorry. You you might have turned this on on May 20th, 2022. Oh, the fun one. fact of the day is back, baby. Oh, got I got three. One. Oh, shit. I got three rapid fire ones because you know what? The fans have spoken. They need the fun fact back. I don't care if this was a few weeks ago. We got to hit them with the knowledge. And maybe I found something out that they didn't even know about. Okay, before you read so, them, Chris, Calgary you, lose in the you're playoffs. saying that as though we were telling you not to do it. You're not. We wanted you to always have one. And you were like, we don't need one. And now you're like, no, I said I said the fans. You guys are a big fan of me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. We were demanding <laughs> it and we are big fans of you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a fan of that shirt you're wearing. I, Thank you, buddy. I'm a fan of. It's the old summer tuxedo. I got the matching shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, this was interesting because billionaire Elon Musk mm-hmm. came out officially and denied that he sexually harassed a flight attendant on a private jet in 2016. Okay. Do you guys think he was guilty or not? Wow. We're going there. All I know is it was his defense was hilarious. Uh, he just said, uh, I didn't. And if I did describe something about my penis that no one else would know. He literally, that's <laughs> oh, like, did he say that? Like, <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty. Holy that sounds shit. innocent to me. <laughs> <laughs> the other interesting thing that happened was the UN warned the world that just 10 weeks is worth of wheat will be left due to the war in Ukraine. And I think it's been how many weeks since then? Are we going to be out of wheat soon, guys? Or are they just trying to scare us all in the fucking news? Wheat? Like the the world's yeah. okay, wheat well, stockpile? Yeah, they is said that there's a regional 10, thing? 10 weeks or... left and that's it. I didn't realize all the wheat came from Ukraine, but... I don't He's, think all the wheat comes from the Ukraine there, Chris. I, I can't imagine it does. I read the you article. Have seen a wheat field in Canada? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I've seen a few. We've seen, we've seen Ryan Dunn uh, uh, sled through a couple yeah. of them, or at least that was grass. That was a cornfield. Corn field. Yeah, yeah. The other thing was it was a bit, you know, they have like national days. Yes. There was two big national days on this day. Okay. National Bee Day. Mm-hmm. Not beans, Mikey, bees. Beads. And, <laughs> and uh, National Ride Your Bike to Work Day. Okay. So yeah, Did not I just had to hit with you with a few. I know I took a little bit of time, but the fans asked, the fans shall receive. Chris, you know? I was going to say that before Jackass 4.5 started, I wrote down a note before you interrupted me, uh, which I'm glad you did because this was great. I'm, I'm happy we started with this, but I literally wrote down, I'm feeling very blessed right now. And I feel even okay. more blessed because we're starting off nice. the episode, A, it's about 4.5 and B, we got some facts of the day. It felt great. It felt great. And for the record, I usually let my car run all day during National Ride Your Bike to Work Day to, <laughs> to balance awesome. things out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, have actually funny, funny story before we get into the episode here. Uh, um, I, I know someone, I'm not going to name names, who had an opportunity to fly on a private jet and they had to take an Uber to go to the place from where the private jet was going to be taking off. The Uber just so happened to have been driving a Prius and the guy driving the Prius, this is a few years back was talking about how much he loves his electric car and how much it's saving this and saving that. And I swear to you, this guy, he's a nice guy and I can't believe he said this, but pulled the dickest move. And he said, Hey, listen, if you have this car 10 years, all of the energy that you've saved as a result of it, I'm going to be spending on my private jet when I fly today. And the guy's like, what the fuck are you doing? Wow. Honestly, that's a power move. That's a big, that's big dick energy. If you ask big dick energy. Yeah, he must have been man spreading something fierce yeah. in that backseat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you guys, you know, this is a, speaking of man spreading, we're really spreading this movie out into a whole nother chapter here. The, the guys behind this, good old Dick House Productions. Um <laughs> Man, I'm just so glad that this exists because right out of the gate, and this Chris was alluding to this in the last episode, this is very much a, a making of. It's not what you expect, and it's 
half, you know, uh, stunts you've never seen before. And it's half, let's just talk about how we make one of these movies and how COVID affected us and how the whole landscape changed and how we didn't even think we'd be here in the first place. There's so much here to dig into and sink your teeth into. I really liked this take on a 0.5 version of Jackass. And uh, let's just, you know, fucking dive right into it. Why don't we? If you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. By the Dixie Chicks? Who the fuck is this? Like, this is a... There's so many different covers of this song by now. Uh, this was this was surprising to hear right out of the gate. Um, it's, it's one of the greatest songs, and it's so yeah. fitting for this franchise. Like, every time I hear it, I just have a smile on my face. I, and I think... This, this intro was so... Th- this version of the song worked so well with the intro. It was just so happy, slow, nostalgic. Wasn't this the version that they used in Jackass 3D, the Karen O version? I thought it was. Not too sure. Yeah. I just enjoyed the song. <laughs> I, I figured it would be the Karen O of the, uh, of the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. They got the song Maps okay. as well. So, uh, not the Dixie Chicks, <laughs> but I tried, God damn it. Listen, I think actually, uh, aren't they just called the Chicks now? I think they legitimately changed their name to the Chicks because really? Dixie, Dixie had some negative connotation to it. Yeah, seriously. Okay. <laughs> Chris has spoken. <laughs> Guys, yeah. the uh, the, the best part about this intro is uh, everyone yeah, walking intro. out of the, you know, everyone's in basically the colored jumpsuits that made Chris almost vomit at the end of our last episode. For some reason, Chris thinks certain colors uh, are, are, are vomit worthy. <laughs> right, right, As they're walking out of the smoke... <laughs> um, all I could think is these guys look so young and so naive. They look 10 years younger. And this is like, you could tell they filmed this bit before the main portions of filming from Jackass uh, forever. And you get to tell this. That's one of the coolest things about this movie. We always talk. We're like, when were certain things filmed and this and that 4.5 goes over. Like that. You see the different hairstyles at different points in filming. You see the different uh, level of, of lost soul in certain people's eyes after certain points in filming. And in this one, yeah, Dave England specifically, he aged a ton during the filming of this movie. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, He's a Skeletor uh, man in this documentary. Really looks like Skeletor. You know how they say, actually, when, when, uh, when you die, people say your hair st- keeps growing and your fingernails keep growing but it isn't that it's just that your 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 skin like shrinks and recedes so everything else grows out is that what happened to dave england he's just like he was like shriveling up so his hair just got down to his shoulders at a certain point Ben, the yeah. fact that he he says yeah with all the ps ptsd that i've got he in literally this situation, says that yeah we've been talking it. about that for like since you know, the, towards the beginning of this podcast. So for him to actually acknowledge it and have us not just think we were crazy, like, I absolutely loved it. That's like one of my favorite nods I've yeah. gotten out of this entire 4.5. Oh, great. Dave England uh, showing some love to uh, one of our recent posts as well. He shared it to his story. Yeah. That felt pretty cool. Thanks, Dave. Love you. Thanks, Dave. Um, You're the best. <laughs> But yeah, Mike, you're so right. This intro is good. And I like that they didn't go over the top for the 0.5, but it's something that works well, you know, slow motion, colorful, running out of the smoke on the beach. And uh, dude, it just works. And uh, hey guys, <laughs> now I know who Eric Monaka is. Thanks on screen <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> now finally you do. Uh, yeah, he said a- the colors almost made me throw up, but at least I'm able to name the colors. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Fucking weirdo. I, what are you uh, talking what, what? What? I don't get it. I don't get it. I what don't do you, understand what do you how say? you're not sitting there puking all over yourself with that ridiculous shirt right now, you motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I did throw up on it. This is actually yellow throw up from the banana milk. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing you're a nasty, Hawaiian shirt for the man. listener, by the way. We, we love our, our, our visual gags on this podcast. Listen, it's a beach party, guys. We're going surfing, bro. Get out the giant novelty surfboard that you can fit like four guys on. That was cool. I like seeing that. Uh, they're doing all sorts of antics and shit here. Water skiing at the beach via an ATV which was really cool. Um, they do the wave and Tony Hawk's there for some reason. And then yeah. he's just gone. He just vanishes into like thin air after that. You never see him again. Uh, yeah, it looks like fun. Just riding waves and shit. And Mike, you, you had mentioned it looked like they shot this before they went into full production on the movie. I mm-hmm. was wondering while they were, you know, was this before or after the movie came out? And I guess my question is like, did they even know there was going to be a 4.5? I guess that's really what I'm wondering because this it's weird that they would have shot two intros. You know what I mean? 
Well, it they almost felt like, I don't think that, I mean, th- I think they know while they're filming that there's always going to be a 0.5. And I was watching this. I'm yeah, like, wow, yeah. kind of an underwhelming intro, eh? But it, it makes sense. Their whole point of the intro is to blow their load on something big and spectacular that they know is going to be the intro to the movie. The 4.5 is never going to be that. In fact, I think, uh, and you, you talk about dating this, like when was this filmed? Did you guys notice like the reason why Poopies has a cast on his hand is because that's from the shark that that yeah, uh, that, that bit his head oh, which yeah. is really neat so okay. it had to have been around there did they film the the shark week thing before or after filming was this a rap party i don't know but i do know i, I oh, think yeah oh so i uh, to me i think that it was like um you know they do screen testing and they're talking about how they got the people together right. so that they're like you know what guys just go out have some fun here's some props to play with and let's just see how you guys look on screen who interacts with each other and then it ended up just being such a fun montage to watch yeah Totally. I got to say, if you if a genie came to me and I mean this earnestly, this is not hyperbole. If a genie came to me and said I had three wishes, I might consider getting to hang out on a beach with the jackass crew as one of them. Right. This looked like so much fucking fun. I all everything about it and everyone was like just being themselves. And and yes, I mean that to include the fact that Steve-O finds a way to shove his surfboard in front of the camera because yeah. it's probably on sale on his website as well at some point. He's just being himself. And Mike, he's a marketing he, uh, master these days. All I can all I can say if genies are coming to you, you might be rubbing just a little bit too hard. Mm. well take it down uh, a couple notches that's that's may, maybe another another wish i might consider is uh is is a little bit more lubrication because if you're rubbing that hard <laughs> chi chi don't want to get a sunburn <laughs> just like preston lacy here who tans the jackass logo on his chest and then they give him a nice slap right on that fresh red skin which ooh, i can feel it i could feel it just watching that one have you guys um, ever seen that happen in real life? I've seen it in like movies and stuff, but I've never seen anyone actually do it in real life. Except I know in Jackass, I think Danger Aaron did it at one point. But apart like apart from Jackass, I've never actually yeah, seen yeah. anyone like sunburn tattoo themselves like that. No, no. No, um, girls used to do it with uh, tanning beds with like the Playboy stickers. Oh, right. You ever notice that? <laughs> yeah, you remember yeah, yeah, that? Yeah. They'd go into the tanning beds like, do you want yeah, a Playboy yeah. sticker? It's like, obviously, I go to a tanning salon. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. The, uh, the 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 one thing I found I think most funny about this because this does end up becoming you know like showcasing a couple stunts and everything and you you get this uh, a buried Zach ass with the crab that has mm-hmm. to go to his nose which is funny you get to laugh and we'll talk about that in a little bit but like imagine being on the beach. And you're just frolicking, having a good time as everyone is. And they're like, okay, uh, everyone, hang on. Zach asks, we got to bury you alive right now. We got a crab <laughs> that's going to go after your nose. And he's like, what? Oh, Manaka just got covered in fucking bubble wrap and got tackled by a hot chick. Like, why can't that happen to me? I got to get buried in the sand and have my nose pierced by a crab. No, thanks. Right. Absolutely. You do because <laughs> step up to the big league. Exactly. You know, they, 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 you know, they only give people what they could handle. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about Jack ass and Zach ass is. A fucking badass. Yeah, he's oh, one totally. of those guys that you know if it hurts, he's going to be one of the. He's like definitely probably one of the top pain guys but these th- days. The funniest mm-hmm. thing about him is that yeah, he does gnarly shit. Like he may be one of the guys who's willing to do the most. Like big ups to him there. But he's also the guy who clearly hates it the most. He gets really hurt <laughs> yeah. and he shows it, and in a way that makes it more hardcore because oh, that's totally, what, he yeah. doesn't have a high pay, uh, a high sucks, pain threshold, right? But he's willing to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's agree. so impressive. Like his reaction is. <laughs> In your life, have you ever said, oh, please, God? Because he unironically <laughs> says, oh, please, God, get it off me. Yeah, Help please. me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just begging Knoxville to take it off. And Knoxville's like, I can't. I'm trying. I can't. <laughs> Whether he actually can or not, I, I assume he's probably inflating that a little bit. I think but. he's learned from Jeff Tremaine on how to extend things a little bit farther. Which is funny because right when we cut away from this, you get a l- little snippet of audio of... um of zach saying fuck you tremaine yes which is like you must have known it was his idea right then and there um and yeah i love it it launches us right into what is now a kind of you know director's chair still shot speaking to the camera documentary type thing and knoxville basically i should say there is a shot before that of knoxville at the end of jackass 3 pulling the pushing the plunger to set off the explosion and i'm just thinking like wait a minute what's going on here this is strange um but then it's it's them talking about how after jackass 3 they were certain that this was never happening again they're always saying this is the last one guys that's the attitude they've always had 
Uh, Jeff thought they were done for sure, but it was actually Knoxville here, according to the documentary, that was just sitting at home thinking about it. And he just says, you know, I want to do another movie. And I couldn't help but think myself that this is basically like heroin for these guys. They've been off it for 10 years and then they got a little taste and and that's it. They're fucked. They got to do another movie now. Um, Yeah, it's it's crazy to see just the thought process here unfolding and that this is something they really can't peel themselves away from. It's been their entire lives up to this point. To me, it's it's almost it less less heroin and more like bank robbery, like like. Brad Pitt knocks on George Clooney's door and he's like, I got one more for us. And George is like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the last one. And then I'm go. out of here. Yeah. What, what I love about this, number one, it to me, what I got a lot of 4.5 is they do have a code. Like in the movie, how many director chair moments ended up being a prank? Yeah. It's like once the filming's done, it's like, all right, boys, we got to cut the shit out. So like they were at least able to like they all seem calm enough to be doing these without looking over their shoulder. And I what I my favorite part about this specific segment was aside from just like hearing like how the, the movie kind of came about is they took the time to do a montage of all the new members. Yes. Like how they came about, what mm-hmm. happened. You know, like they talk about poopies. They showed that one little clip of poopies when he's on skis going down the road and just taking the pylons <laughs> to the nuts. Oh, like, the dick, yeah. I fucking love that. <laughs> Top notch oh, shit, you know? Like, so good. and Steve was like, I just love poopies. He's so lovable and dumb. And that's a perfect fucking mix for jackass. And it's yeah. like, absolutely. And it just goes through with everybody's little thing and it just gives a little blurb on each person because we didn't, unless you took the time to research, you didn't really know much about these people or how they came right. out to be in this scene. So it was really nice for them to kind of show us that. Yeah, we should. This would be a good time as well to say, uh, you know, a keen listener of the Jackass podcast will notice that we moved past the intro without giving it a rating. We're not going to be doing ratings for this one just because everything is so kind of piecemeal. It's all over the place and the stunts are very clearly unfinished, maybe more so yeah. than any of the other point five movies. Like when I was sitting down, yeah. I was expecting a 0.5 movie like the other 0.5 movies we'd seen, you know, which was essentially just another another movie with brand new stunts. This one was was way more of a documentary and a making of. And at first, I got to be honest, when I saw the intro cut into interviews, I was a little bummed out. I was like, I I don't know if I want this, you know, because the interview was going on for a long time. I wanted to get into another stunt and see some more chaos. I'm fiending that because I know Jackass is coming to an end until they until they continue on but the more it went on the more i realized i think my soul needed this that they they gave us what we didn't know we needed 100 percent, and it worked so well oh yeah man it works great and i love chris you'd mentioned this is the segment where they kind of introduce the new cast we kind of talked about poopies but next up in the lineup is jasper and i love that you know with these introductions you get to see things from the new members that weren't in the movie like he does a goes off a jump off a ramp into a bunch of like kitty cars yeah and uh, he's wearing like an orange cape and it was really cool and there's a little comment here though that jeff says he says he found Jasper uh, working together with him on the Warrior Squad. Do you happen to know what that the, is? Lo- I don't loiter, know the Loiter Squad. Oh, yeah. Loiter Squad. That was okay, the TV show that he did with Tyler, the creator. Okay, gotcha. Your favorite your favorite rapper, Jay. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was cool that like, because they do talk about the origins of everybody and like, how did you find these people is something that it's like a question that gets asked for every single new for member, sure. which I think is something you need. Um, and it's interesting to see where these guys came from. Like with Zach up next, we already know he was famous on YouTube, just doing stunts just because he wanted to. And he kind of blew up on his own. He uh, demonstrates the, the uh, suicide vest here, which, wow, I've never saw that before. <sighs> That's so basically nutty. Yeah, he's he's just decked out like he's not wearing any clothes, but he's decked out in like fireworks and they light him up and they just go off and they're like around his neck and on his back. He's burnt after this. It's fucking gnarly. Like I couldn't believe it. He probably like was really stinky after that, too. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, I think that's his default. This, if anything, may have burned off some of the stench. I don't know. Oh, it, and we'll see some of that in the uh, Zach Sashimi, which is, oh, my God. Uh, I almost don't want to talk about it. Uh, the the uh, uh, the coolest thing about this is it really shows that the jackass crew are constantly looking to raise other people up i know that there's the whole thing of like don't send us your stunts this that the other mtv can't be held liable whatever but everyone has a story of someone in the jackass crew bringing them 
out bringing them up like i think poopies it was it was uh trip taylor or something like that uh uh, mm -hmm. uh and there was also poopies the story of of steve-o sharing one of his videos and him saying like overnight he just blew up zach ass as well steve-o coming to him and 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 deeming him to be zach ass rachel wolfson uh, uh uh johnny knoxville was just a fan of her instagram content like all of this is is just hey i got an idea for someone cool who deserves a shot and let's give it to them instead of just like holding out a brand new realm of uh of things also johnny knoxville finding eric minock on the set of that uh that movie that they filmed i think action point or danger point or whatever that thing was called yeah yeah what, was it that? he said it was shot in south africa yeah oh so yeah. maybe it wasn't that's that why because i saw action point i don't think that was it but okay but either uh, way yeah he was on the set segment. of a movie with him somewhere yeah that segment is funny too because they're interviewing him and it's right after the in the intro and the it is action uh, point Pony's actually he is cock. an action point yeah, it's it's right after when Pontius shoots his big monster, green monster load over everybody, and they're interviewing him like right the moment after they yes. finish shooting that, so he's all covered in like the the semen and they're, he they has basically the semen bring in that his up mouth, in the you know, He has to yeah. keep it there for the next shot, and Johnny's yeah. like, "Hey, how isn't it so cool?" And he's like, "I can't, I got a mouthful of cum, dude. I can't. I don't know what you want from me right now." Yeah, oh, Jesus. sorry, yeah, mom. He says, which is always a good reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is great. Um, wow. So we have a cast now. What? Uh, they're kind of looking at it going, well, what do we do? Do we shoot? Do we move forward with, with this? And it kind of comes upon them. Like they start to realize like, holy shit, we're old now. Fuck. Like, you know, we're going to have to lean on these guys a little bit. They're worried that on their own is like, is this going to still be funny? And I think that's right. a question that was on all of our minds before we saw the movie going in. Is it going to work in today's age? hundred percent. Never doubt it for a second. Oh, did you never doubt it? Because I this is Not one of those for the slightest bit. I knew it was going to be good. I didn't give a fuck. This is one of those like, moments I, I just knew. where I felt like like a like a grumpy old man. You know how like when you're a kid and you're just like like I remember our dad. He's like cartoons suck. I'll never watch cartoons. Animated movies suck. I'm like dad. Toy Story is an animated movie. There are great animated movies out there. He's like, I don't care. They suck. Like unwilling to give it a chance. And it, it for a split second in my mind, I was like, new jackass crew. These new kids aren't going to be any good compared to the old guys. And it was like, oh, that's kind of what I meant. And but right away, it it worked like they all took to it. And, and then you start to realize you're like, of course, like, of course, it's going to work. Like, yeah. yes, you have the original crew. They're still there guiding. I think more important than anything, you've got everyone behind the scenes you've got spike jones you've got uh jeff tremaine they're the they're orchestrating everything and even johnny knoxville doing that as well they're not gonna let this be bad it doesn't matter who the talent is they're gonna make a way find a way to make it work yeah exactly and i think like it's like you said it it, it doesn't take long if there was some doubt going into the movie to be like oh yeah they still got it like the intro sequence is enough in jackass forever for me to say yep looking forward to this hundred yeah. percent like uh these guys haven't lost it and i think that speaks to what knoxville says earlier in this documentary you know it he couldn't help but put these new ideas to paper and then make them real Th these guys are so passionate about this thing that they do more than anyone else out there that uh to see them back here and doing their thing behind the scenes is just great and i think what i love about this is it's not all interview we get our first look at some of the cut um sketches here and the first thing they shot was indeed fire in the hole which is something i didn't <laughs> mm -hmm. even know about until i watched this uh i was under the impression that the human ramp was the first thing they shot mm. that was included in the first day of shooting but this was the first sketch so the setup here is that we've got uh, Wee Man's Chronic Taco Hot Sauce. Dude, Steve-O was uh, probably so butthurt, pun intended, that they didn't use his hot sauce. Dude. It's literally called Steve-O's Hot Sauce for your butthole, and they missed the mark on that. <laughs> I think you got to share the plugs, though. You know? Right, right. Yeah. He's, he is sharing them, but this was also but this was also Steve-O's idea. He's the one who did this stunt first. Yeah. yeah. But, I, you know, maybe True. it's just the fact that it's like, hey, Steve-O, the world has already seen hot sauce enter some your hot sauce enter someone's butthole share the love a little bit and yeah, I, exactly. I love the idea that behind closed doors an earnest conversation happened over whose branded hot sauce was going to be shoved in human beings butts <laughs> that's what i love about jackass i mean they had four guys here so they could have did two and two i don't know True. But, uh, we had Preston, Poopies, Dave, and honestly, I didn't see who that was a uh, second from the left because he had his head down the whole time. It was a blonde guy. I didn't, I didn't catch who that was. Oh, it was, I, I think it was did. Jaws, uh, or, uh, uh, he's, I think Jaws, he, he had been in a couple other stunts as well. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, we got four Sorry, guys there. Oh, he's got to get it out of the fridge. Oh, Chris actually the has the Steve's hot, hot sauce yeah. for your butthole. If you're watching over on YouTube. Steve-O, if you're listening. 
We gave you the plug, buddy. Send me a case. <laughs> we really gave him the butt sauce. plug. Ooh. Oh, give you a butt okay, plug. definitely getting it now. Hey, uh, let's put it into some butts, guys. So the guys are laying down face down. And hey, they were thoughtful enough to give them a bit of an incline, like their feet are up off the ground a little bit. I think that's <laughs> to get the, the sauce to flow. You know, you want it to go in the right direction here. But everybody hates this immediately. Like everybody's just hates wincing it. and groaning. Like this I is before the, the hot we sauce were... is introduced. This is just the syringe. <laughs> yeah, it. I think they know the impending, you know, sting that that is coming their way. And I think we all had the burning question on our minds. No pun intended. That uh, is this going to burn? Like, does it work the same as when it's in your mouth? The answer is yes. Absolutely. Everybody's just shouting yes. Like Knoxville's asking him, hey, does it burn? And like you look, <laughs> Dave's looking up at the camera. His eyes are like fucking saucers. He's like, yes, it burns. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. When, when I like, I don't know about you guys and how you are with hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Yeah. The, it's no problem going down the whole entire next day. Like I've had times where my at when I shit that my asshole is on so much fire oh, yeah, that I have there. to like I have to like ball up toilet paper and <laughs> put it in between my cheeks so that there's airflow in between the cheeks just to kind of cool it down. I swear to God, you've told us this story on the yes. podcast before. <laughs> he has. I, yeah, it's 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 no joke, you know. So when I knowing that, and that's like a day later after it's diluted yeah. with your stomach and all that stuff yeah. going right Ooh. into your ass, man. This freaked me the fuck out. This would not be fun. No, no. I always I always love the fact too that like the reason spice exists in our world is because plants were just like hey if i become i mean they're not thinking this they're fucking plants they're dumb as shit but they're just like hey if i develop spice birds aren't going to want to eat me because it's going to hurt them and then us dumbass humans are just like hey that spice thing's pretty good let's harvest those plants specifically because they have the thing that they thought would protect them <laughs> we're just such assholes well, do, you, do you know why do you know why they they like spicy stuff in hotter climates it actually cools your body temperature oh down. yes yeah yeah so that's why sweat, a lot of sweat, those sweat. things. And Mikey, you said plants don't think. Me and you have done mushrooms together. We know plants are very fucking smart beings, well, and we've communicated that's with a, them. That's a fungus. That's a fungus. Well, but no, the plants. Yes, you. No, I mean can. we've completely commu- blah, 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 communicated with the plants while we were on them. You know what's the funny? Trees come alive, like, baby. People think you're joking, but I've no. I've also yeah, like you said, we've done mushrooms, and I have a lot of plants in my place since doing them. <laughs> I actually do. <did>, like, <laughs> They're controlling you. <laughs> oh man! That's my fantastic. favorite, my favorite reaction of of any of the moments when they start to mm. to pour the the hot sauce in the buttholes, uh, something I'll never get tired of saying is poopies. The look of concentration he has, tell me he didn't kind of look like he was enjoying it in spite of himself. And his fear was not because the stuff was going in his butt, but because something was awakening in him. That's a hundred percent what I read from him. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, his is the oh, one that went down the fastest. Uh, yeah, he he, uh, so he was chugging it like he was he figured out the Steve-O butt yeah. chug pretty quickly and he was chugging the hot sauce in there because he's kind of like, no, taking see, it. You I, know? I think I think there's a difference. Yes, he did figure it out. But when everyone else was like, oh, it's not going in, it's not going in. He realized he kind of liked it. So he was like, like bringing it up. And That's what I'm saying. And, That's right. what, exactly but then what I'm he, saying. The reason he looks scared and confused is because he's like, fuck, I'm drinking this shit way too fast. They're going to they're going to catch on to the fact that I'm really enjoying this. I got to <laughs> slow this down. I got to slow this right down. Oh, my God. Do you see after I, the, with the popsicles after they go yeah, through it all popsicle. to cool it down? And I, you know, if you had any inclination, I didn't realize it until after the fact, like he stuck it, poopies especially <laughs> stuck it right up there and then took a bite and then shat out the tip of it a good <laughs> chunk so it was it was at least halfway up there and it literally had shit on it too so poopies, uh, poopies yeah. literally lost half of the popsicle in his ass in his ass yeah, the, he's living up to the name what do you he want? was absolutely living up living up to the name but the yeah. when everyone which by the way the the you know this hurt more than they even let on because the willingness with which people went from don't get that plastic syringe anywhere close to my asshole to please shove that popsicle up my asshole right away <laughs> was like uh, just turned on a dime oh, totally. like they were ready for it and dave england the sincerity where he looks to the camera and he's like it's it's working it's, it's really working. working like oh my god dave that's he's got stockholm syndrome like nothing else he's like thank you sir johnny for sticking the hot sauce up my butt and being so kind as to give me a popsicle to shove up there to follow i think that man is silently screaming to all of us that he just wants to escape (laughs) i think (laughs) he just can't say it in front of the guys uh 
Poor Dave. But, uh, you know, I thought about how Knoxville was saying earlier in this that uh, he had all of these ideas and he couldn't sleep because he just had to do them. Right. And then there's four grown men getting hot sauce animals. <laughs> So. <laughs> so that's what he's thinking about in bed. He's like, I there got these go. ideas. I can't stop thinking about these four grown men shoving hot sauce up their ass. It's really preventing me from sleeping. <laughs> we get a little interstitial here from Rachel saying she's a little starstruck going into her first shoot. And how could you not be? She said she's, you know, grown up watching these guys and now she's one of them. And it's a little, it's a little strange, a little uncanny. Uh, this next one though, well, it also took place on the first day of shooting and it's called The Long Jump. I see why they didn't put it in the movie, but I really like the idea. The dudes just lay down in a row as if they are the sand pit in a long jump. And <laughs> Preston and Zach are in track suits. And they're going to jump over the gang. And that's basically Dude, it. Zach's legs, like his upper thighs, looked like a fat vagina. Fat vagina. They, you Chris, go. you're 100% right. I was staring <laughs> I mean, at a fat vagina. I know you guys vagina. all probably had that in your notes. I didn't it's, even... No, it, Chris, I, usually I do have those things in my notes. But that... I didn't have to write it down. That image is burned in my mind. I knew I wasn't going to have to refer to my notes to remember that so, his thighs looked like a fat vagina. Was it symmetrical then? Or I didn't catch that. It, it was the it was a really juicy lips. Like, yes. it, was, it was a little too yeah. juicy for my liking. All right. All right. It was I was well, liking uh, it in spite of myself, just like poopies in the hot sauce, to be honest. <laughs> there you go. The dude says he weighs more than 400 pounds. And all I got to say, between the two of them, Zach definitely, he actually got a little air, whereas Preston kind of just got to the edge of the pit and <laughs> fell on everybody. Like his his knees. He doesn't even working. try to jump. He doesn't even try. <laughs> well, that's, that's my favorite part about this is Johnny starts it off by going, all right, let's get your spots. And he runs and he grabs the first spot, right. thinking that's going to be the safest spot. And everybody rushes to get the next spots, not even thinking there's no way these fucking guys are flying all the way to the end. <laughs> yeah. Whoever fucking thought they screwed up and was at the end didn't even get touched the entire time. You've Johnny even first got kicked in the freaking ribs. <laughs> Wee Man got his fucking nut smacked big time or elbowed in the nuts. 100%. This was fucking chaos. They're thinking he's going to be Zach ass is going to be fucking Keanu Reeves on the top of a building in the Matrix, like jumping 40 feet. It's not going to happen. Or Michael Jordan with the free throw dunk. It yeah. ain't going down, buddy. This is this is, this is not jump, man. Like. <laughs> No, the uh, the slow motion replays don't do it justice either to their technique, but they are fun to watch as everybody, uh, you know, gets nailed by these guys. And I just uh, wouldn't I think it the be best funny part... if they didn't actually play slow motion replays? Jay just thought the whole thing was in slow motion because they were running so slow. <laughs> I was just mesmerized by the jiggling. That's yes. all it was. Yes. It put me in a trance. Um, time slowed down. This definitely made me realize something like. I always wondered, like, man, like when I was in high school, I never slept with one of my teachers. And that's because none of my gym teachers looked like that? Chris Pontius. Chris uh, Pontius would have yeah. had me for sure. He was a <laughs> sexy, sexy gym teacher in that outfit. I thought this yeah, was like some was. sexy, you know, seventh grade track meet flashback or something you were about to get into. But same. I was nope, excited. Right. Nope. It was going to hey guys, some I, hot I don't have one of those stories, well. unfortunately. All yeah. I know is the winner, as Rachel puts it, is clearly diabetes. In this Amazing. Line, so. A great fucking well, line. Johnny loved there. that. Johnny loved that line, too. He fucking cackled. You, you see him specifically. You know what I love about <laughs> about this specifically? Uh, this this uh, 4.5 is you really, really, really get to see the different personalities and what they all bring to the table. Like, Rachel is no joke just like fucking hilarious great one-liners she seems to be coming up yeah. with them on her own uh that's like the, the what she brings to the table zach ass is the guy who gets hurt poopies is the the stupid funny guy uh with with a, gr a big old heart um and the biggest it, heart the biggest <laughs> heart like you see him behind the scenes and he's like Dude, yeah. he can't even do the interview because he's just saying hi to everyone it's amazing <laughs> yeah uh, I it's, love it's that. so cute I love that. the one thing i noticed i i want to ask you guys about zach ass yeah. in this one specifically it's a long jump right we've all done long jump there are there are rules in long jump wherever your feet are that's where they measure the long jump and if your hands fall behind you that then then you you're penalized and they measure from where your hands are what was his goal here he did a head dive he he dove head first onto everybody he he didn't even try to like like bring his like he was just like fucking uh like like zangief just like sprinting and just like head <laughs> and butt through everyone like what is this guy's plan here you know the e-honda he did the e-honda yeah, e yeah, the exactly, fucking torpo exactly, torpedo yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> That's a good reference. Uh, you know what? I think he was just like, this is their turn to get fucked up and I'm going to fucking yeah, be partaking yeah, just, it because they've been getting me good and I want to get my shit out. True. That's it, man. Land hard and and don't worry about it. I I got to ask, though, I 
I want to talk about the big boys for just a second. I want to focus in on them. And this isn't to, you know, hey, if you're a bigger bigger person and you're listening, I have no beef with you. It's fine. Like, you are who you are. No, yeah, they they got no beef, beef for you. Listen. We got no beef for you, so leave us alone. Leave us alone, please. <laughs> don't hurt We're me. I don't have trouble. any beef left but, on me. <laughs> Chris ate all the beef. Uh, but, you know, you got these big boys in here. I don't know if you guys noticed this. But they always just kind of look like they're not having a good time. Like they're just, you know, they're they're usually frowning. They're kind of just irritated with everything. They're kind of like, oh, I guess I'll do the stunt. Can you guys just leave me alone after this? I don't think it's their fault, though, because I think we give Preston a lot of shit for always being grumpy. I think like the amount of running and shit they make these guys do and like physical stuff for their sketches. You know, I think they're, it's kind of like if Phil just ate a big hoagie. You know, he's kind of like that post blood <laughs> sugar crash. He's not in the best mood. He's, you know. Also, He's imagine just it. having to stand with 400 pounds on you. Like, that's Jesus not even Christ, a joke. It, it, even. Would, it would suck. All, yeah. Constantly, it would suck. I would always yeah, they, be miserable. I, I like in all honesty, it's like sometimes we give a hard time to Preston or something like that because he's in a mood. But that's also like his bit and his attitude. Yeah. And that's what the guys like about him. And on top of it, dude, imagine if any of us were in that situation. I would be the most miserable fucking cunt in the True. world. Like everybody would hate me. I would. I just wouldn't be on the movie. They would kick me out. Yeah. So obviously they're doing something right. And like they have these situations, but it's like, it's all part of the game. And you know what? They do a pretty goddamn good job. And you know, mm-hmm. it's time to give some, some credit where it's deserved. Totally. There you go. Oops. What the fuck? Um, that was Steve-O's hot sauce on my floor. All right. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but these test shoots, they kind of feel like your basic pack of crayons, you know? There's a little bit of everything in there that you need for jackass to make sense. Nothing too crazy. It's the basics. I feel like I'm glad we got to see, you know, their, this was like their gauntlet to see if the new guys were going to be good to shoot with. And then they come out of it feeling pretty good so far, but we're not quite to the end of the day yet. The dick squish is up next. <laughs> Dong pong, as Knoxville calls it here. This is the two pieces of plexiglass smushing the uh, the boys' uh, uh, nasty parts, nasty bits. And uh, Jasper calls it, I love the way he describes this. He says it's like going to a science class and he <laughs> learns something new that the dick can do, which I thought was a great line. Oh, man. His his like I I think he should put on his uh on his tombstone hopefully no time soon but when it when it comes to that he says and I quote I ain't never seen a dick that thin in my life and those are like that's just that's just a gift from the gods when you hear a line like that I want to hear something like that every day I just want to call Jasper and be like hey Jasper s- s- say a line to me right now he's like I ain't never seen a dick that thin in my life. And I'm like, thanks, Jasper. I'm good with the rest of the day. Hang up the phone and go about my day. It would be fantastic. <laughs> Should be my alarm when so, I wake up in the morning. Yeah. So we talked about, like, uh, for example, like the, the, the long jump. And we're like, yeah, we can see why this didn't make the movie. This was the exact opposite to me. This was a better version than the one that was actually in the movie. It was more dynamic. They were playing ping pong. There was two people involved. There was a tug of war. Like, I don't understand how this didn't make the movie versus the other one. Like, totally. no knock to Pontius or anything. But this was, a, this was a better version, if you ask me. Yeah. And, like, Poopies comes out of that thing, too, when they're doing the tug of war. Oh. Like, he slips out. I don't even want to know what that felt like. It Holy looks shit. awful. <laughs> It the looks rapid awful. expansion that must have occurred. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I agree, Chris, although I, I kind of fell on the other side of it. I was like, this, I, I just don't understand why it was in the movie at all. I think this was fun. This The, the whole thing was perfect for Jackass 4.5. And the fact that it was in the movie, even that little bit, I was like, there must be something more to this that we'll find out in 4.5, but it wasn't quite enough. Like it wasn't good enough to be its own thing. So I just got me wondering like what, what we were even looking at. It was fun. The whole idea of knowing that this is their first day on set. Like literally Rachel said, she's like, I was just introduced to everybody and now I've seen their <laughs> oh penises and buttholes. Uh, and, 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 and I feel like amazing. And about we felt it. like, like a family after that. Family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. Um, I was wondering, man, when I saw her in the movie sitting there, I'm like, how early is this? And now that I find out it's the first fucking amazing. day, like, of course the guys have no fucking, uh, what's the word? Um, there's no subtlety here. There's no, like, there's no, no reservations, it's, nothing. They're just so unaware of like, yeah, fuck Bourdain. it. You know, like <laughs> if she can see this and she can hang with this, then she's cool enough to be here for the whole movie. And God, it's just. Of course, of course, it's the first day, right? You you would almost have to run that gauntlet because if 
like you need to basically pull out the worst stops because in all honesty, like, I'm sorry, it is what it is. Like if you have a, a girl or a guy, for example, that's a new person that's not comfortable with the most extreme things, it's going to fuck the movie yeah, up. Yeah. So you really need to make sure yeah. that people are vetted and you you take them up here on the first day. And if they could hang with that and you could tell they're not uncomfortable sure. and you could tell they're cool and actually down with it, then you can move forward. But you, you cannot have any anybody in there that if, they, if they're scared to see a dick or an asshole, it's going to fucking ruin the whole movie. Do you guys think it's sexist that they didn't make Rachel do full frontal do the- nudity? <laughs> No, I I was wondering why she wasn't in the butt chug, but then you do the other the other the oh. <laughs> not the butt chug, oh. the fire in the hole. Like she had oh two boy. holes, she could have done a double fire in the hole. Really, that would have been yeah. a great stunt. Then then yes, we would have been able to include both hot that. sauces. That's the solution. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you have Steve and Lee Man arguing over which hole they get. <laughs> oh boy. Steve yeah. would have to be the butthole because it literally is the sauce for your butthole. And Steve is already. for your clam, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. It's it's the clam. Oh. Or, or oh no, taco. Your yeah, taco. Yeah, there you taco. go. Taco. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. All Dude, I would say to your question, Mikey, that is itself. if she's okay with doing that and she wants to go full frontal, then yeah, fucking let her do it. But I don't think there should be like a an obligation that you know just because we saw Dave's balls, we have to see your coochie or whatever. You know. Yeah, it's not one to one. But I, I here's the thing. I bet you she'd be down with it. Like I, I, I don't think like clearly she's she hasn't shown any reservations about anything she's doing. And I wonder if it was, you know, is, is it different because it's one one uh, woman on set and the rest, I, who, who the fuck knows? But it, 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 it wouldn't supr- eventually we're going to have to see it. Eventually, we're going to have to see female nudity and jackass. Well, I don't think you do, because, you know, it sucks to be a guy in certain aspects, maybe this aspect. Male comedy, especially full frontal, or sorry, male nudity is comedy. Yeah. You know, where where yeah, girl nudity, point. regardless, is sexualized. And and that's just kind True. of unfortunately the way it is. Like we have to get laughed at for our dicks. No, dicks they get are to funny, be there they they have to get like what? sexualized for it. So I think I can understand why they wouldn't Not, yeah. have that. It's it's really I, frustrating. I like a good actually. comedian, you know? That's all I'm saying. I like a good comedian and dicks are just like funny people that you meet, you know? <laughs> you appreciate them, it's just different, you know. I I yeah, yeah. I like to I like a good swimsuit model, but uh Jerry Seinfeld's all right, so I bet you if Jerry Seinfeld was a penis, he'd be uh, cleanly circumcised. That's all You'd, I'm saying. Yeah, I was hundred <laughs> percent. But uh, hundred percent. Uh, sorry, Chris. Penises. Oh, that's a better segue. Penises. We got an electric eel. I don't know. They kind of look like dicks. They do kind of look like dicks. Yeah, that was that's... bad. Bad segue. But I don't no, know. I was trying. Was... You got to give me a shot. Every I like once that in a while. you. I like that you interrupted <laughs> to make that segue. You're like, hang on, Jay. One second. I got something to say. Did uh, you guys fucking know? Dicks are like eels, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever notice that? It's the craziest thing. Uh, and yeah, before we get Sounds to the eel, when everyone's showing up on set to do the eel sketch. Chris, you mentioned this earlier. Poopies is like high fiving, fist bumping everybody. He is like the nicest guy because I think he's got that. You know, when you have a certain level of, um, let's just call it uh, street smarts versus book smarts, you have that <laughs> a certain ratio there. You just tend to be kind of joyful about the moment to moment. You're not really too stressed most of the time. He seems just like such a fun guy. He has a good Seriously. energy to him. You know, I like that. Um, I don't know if you guys were thinking the same thing here as well but seeing everyone show up i was kind of starting to wonder is bam gonna walk in at some point i had the thought uh, i yeah. kept having that thought. i was i was pretty vocal about my my theory that uh, uh bam was going to be in jackass 4.5 the timing of him dropping the lawsuit and the announcement of 4.5 coming several weeks after or, or or not too many weeks after i really expected it i was i was still really bummed out that's it's very sad uh, big time yeah. bummed out yeah like at this point like throw him a bone you know what i mean like he's trying to help himself there's some bitterness it's a very good way to yes yeah, still hold your point and not have him in the movie because he broke his contract or whatever the hell the circumstance was mm. but throw the fucking guy a bone and show him there is a way back you yeah. know give him an olive branch and this is the perfect way to do it and i'm definitely a little bitter that they didn't do that yeah. i'm not gonna lie i do have a thought on that though i kind of wonder because these things you know, production wise are usually pretty far ahead. I'm wondering if this was already cut and finished before they kind of cleared things up with him and they kind of felt like, well, we can't really go back and re-edit it or something like that. That's a, that's a really you good know? point that it, there's no way yeah. that like they, they don't finish editing three weeks before a movie comes out. Yeah. 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 And, and we're also assuming that he was there for a lot of stunts. Maybe he really wasn't. Could have been like maybe yeah. he really didn't do much before this whole thing stopped. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. And you said throw him a bone. Well, hey, Chris, I don't know if you noticed this, but bones kind of look <laughs> similar <laughs> to electric eels. 
which is great because this next sketch uh, actually has an <laughs> well played, Jay. in it. Uh, I was playing checkers. You were playing chess yeah. there, man. That was that was well done. <laughs> Knoxville has a, a mustache painted on for this one. I'm not really sure. I guess they're going for like an old, you know. No, he's looking. Um, he wants Tesla. to look like Tesla. He wants to look like yeah, Nikola Tesla. Oh, he's looking like Tesla. Okay, well that's now, why I've now got the I'm mustache up to speed. That's why. That's the inspiration, is it? Yeah. So there you go. We we just pulled the curtain back on Mikey there a little bit. I like that. Um, I thought so you were going for Post Malone, but. <laughs> We've got James the scientist here, which Knoxville asks him, James, are you a scientist? Yes. And I think he says, what's that? Like, he doesn't know what a scientist is. I don't know. I just thought that was weird. Anyway, the electric (laughs) eels in the tank, they got 600 volts, baby. And uh, basically, they're trying to find out the age old question. Can it go through a dude into a metal key and then into someone else's butthole? And the dude in this in this segment is Wee Man. He's going to be the first conductor passing along to poor old Aaron McGahey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is uh, fun to watch because Wee Man is having a ton of trouble getting the script right. They, they're there for probably a good 10 straight minutes just trying to get the intro shot. Poor guy. Oh, that was the best part. And I love his little Ben Franklin costume. <laughs> so he is cute. so mm-hmm. cute as Ben mm-hmm. Franklin. <laughs> he looks so cute as Ben Franklin. It's a good look. I- I also, I got to be honest with you guys, I, you know what, I, I don't like admitting my stupidity very often. I don't do it often um, uh, because it, it's embarrassing. But when they said that an electric eel has 600 volts, I have no idea what that means. I never have. Is is 50 a lot? It could stop your heart. Is six. Yeah. Well, think about with what the, is light, a watt? Uh, the, the, the socket. Watts are, watts are way le- like, it's a, it's almost like a, like a ki- uh, kilogram versus a. Uh, like a like a what, Chris? Gram. Okay, a gram. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, no. Six hundred watts could stop a human's heart. Holy shit, that's crazy. Or six hundred volts. I mean, sorry. So it's, you, it's basically like a it's it could kill you. Is, is yeah, what but you're here's saying. the thing uh, with electric eels. Um, once they emit their electricity, once every time after that, actually. Uh, goes down they only could hold so much of a charge so i'm sure they probably got it to do a shock first just to make sure it wasn't at that 600 volt level i learned that on uh naked and afraid xl the other week actually oh wow (laughs) i love it um this is great i love well you know they're getting the setup here aaron's standing there with a pink kite just smiling because he has to hold the pose for like the intro you know to get (laughs) we men say his lines and he's just there just in that position for like the whole time just trying to keep it together pretty funny um i'm, I'm realizing I, one of my favorite things you know how yeah. like different jackass members have have different ways of of reacting to pain uh dave england always looks like he's gonna cry poopies always looks like he's gonna cry that's kind of like their signature thing one of my favorite things about aaron is him trying to hold a pose or a face or or uh, a certain demeanor <laughs> while anticipating pain because he's like eh, eh, eh. he looks like he's yeah, like yeah. a rabid dog like 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 uh, just just constantly twitching and everything i and yeah. i've i've realized that i i absolutely love that even like you know you look back to uh in jackass forever when he's he's tied down with the bear and he's almost convulsing he's just his brain's trying too hard to process things and he just can't can't wrap his head around it i love that yeah yeah key goes in butt Wee man touches the eel pikachu uses thundershock and it works baby it works i dude and, I'm, uh, I'm i'm so glad you said that because it, i don't know why i haven't put this together but like an eel is a real life fucking pokemon there's no difference oh between God, like between it. an eel and and a pokemon that w- except it doesn't say eel but I'm sure it could because they're creepy as fuck. They whisper eel. They just eel, eel, eel. <laughs> Please never do that face again. I, I need to sleep tonight. Uh, so there's one thing they do. They Speaking of uh, slow motion replays, that seems to be a thing we get a lot in this. Aaron is yelling in slow-mo when the you know he's taking the shock and they're exiting the, um, the tank shortly afterwards. It sounds like Solid Snake dying in Metal Gear Solid 1. <laughs> go back and have a listen. There you go. How's that for back-to-back video game references for you? I like it. Um, I like it. But you yeah. know what I liked was friggin' so, uh, whoever offset was like, did it work? And we man's like, it's, yeah, obviously it fucking works. It's fucking electricity. <laughs> like, who the fuck thinks to ask that? Like, you saw that. You almost heard it. You know well, what I mean? Or you might have yeah. even heard it. Like That's any good a- episode of Mythbusters, you have to, at the end, say if the myth was busted or not. I mean, come on. It feels like Jeff Tremaine knowing how to just agitate people that little bit more to get a reaction out of them. You know, hey, true, did, true. We man, did that? Did you did you get it that time? Just, Fuck you, Jeff. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
And now we get the, uh, I don't know if this was supposed to be like the, you know how you get like um in a movie, it's like a three, three uh, act kind of show, right? So like there's a point where the hero is down on his luck and he has to fight back. You know, things were going good, but not anymore. We're shutting down, says Knoxville. It's COVID. And on his birthday, too, he gets the call. Oh, ouch. So no one knew what to expect. They said that uh, they didn't come back to shooting until from the point he got the call. It was October 2020 when they came back. Um, and that was like a seventh month, seven month break for them from shooting. And, you know, they come back and it's like the world has changed. They're doing swab tests now on right. the production site. Like this also explains why Knoxville had gray hair in this half of the movie. As we learn, he stopped dying it because they didn't know what the fuck was up. And, uh, it's nice to have that fact, that question answered because I was, you know, we were all wondering when we saw the movie initially. So yeah, the before the, and after the of it, movie, yeah. First movie in LA back up and running at this point in like no one else is shooting right now. So they're kind of the guinea pig, they say. Uh, yeah. What did you guys think of the dynamic here? I, I love this part of it. And it's weird because, you know, COVID is like such a it's just been a part of our life for a long time. And it's going to time capsule this, but in a good way, because yeah. we hopefully are going to be looking back at this later on being like, wow, do you remember how crazy that was? And even to the point, even as of how things are now, like you look back and you're like, man, they really were doing this and this and this. And I love how Knoxville like, makes that comment. He's like, well, I'm safe to film an extremely dangerous movie. Yeah. Like how <laughs> yeah. ironic yeah. is that when yeah, you really yeah. think about it? It's like, okay, you got to be safe from this thing just so you can go risk, really risk your life in this crazy aggressive way. 100%. Like I just, I think this is going to be an interesting thing to look back on in 20 years for people that may not have been a part of it, or it's been such a distant memory. And I think this is always going to kind of show some really cool, interesting things. I, I I love the idea of like 30 years from now, like we're talking to our kids just like, I, when I was your age, I, we got our Irving Zisman <laughs> makeup on. I used to watch, we're eating like a pill. That's an entire meal. I used to, we're still on our phones, obviously, because we're not giving those up. I used to love jackass. It was a bunch of friends and just kicking each other in the balls and pulling pranks on each other. And your kids are like, what? Okay, granddad, like whatever the fuck you're talking about. And you're like, watch this clip. And then everyone's got a mask on and they're shoving things up their nose. And they're like, what was that, grandpa? You're like, that was the COVID. That was another. God, uh, there's so much you have to learn, little kid. Like that is a time capsule for the weirdest (laughs) senses of humor in the weirdest time that we hopefully will ever live it through in our entire lives uh it's gonna give me pts dave later in my life i think well one, one other thing that this segment really showed which it makes a lot of sense is they're talking they're like because of covid we couldn't interact with the public as much as we normally right, would right so this became a lot about pranking the st- the jackass members themselves and yeah. this starts this whole segment which explains the majority of the movie which it gave us something that we might not have gotten otherwise and I think the pranks ended up making this movie so fucking good because it showed, you know, this new generation, this new things like what pranks really are and how they're supposed to go about. So yeah. it was almost a blessing and a curse in some aspects. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And I love like it does not take them long to use COVID to create yes. a prank. Like it's immediately <sighs> they come on set and they're just like, hey, let's throw a safety meeting. Guys, you're listening. It's a safety meeting. It's a safety meeting. It's not a safety <laughs> meeting. Don Raffin is here. He's a COVID-19 compliance offer, officer, or so he says. Uh, they're all sitting around a table, like super serious. You know, you've been to any work meeting. Just picture that. That's the vibe here. It's like very low energy. One dude talking at the head of the table. And then before you know it, the fucking table explodes into a bouncy castle, that which was- I'm kind of okay with. I don't uh. think I'd be that upset. Afterwards. The fact that it was a bouncy castle is just perfect. How the oh, yeah. fuck did they fill it up so quick? Like, that's yeah. crazy to me. Those they are big. seal it that well, too. Yeah. Like, they must yeah. have to really pack that fucking thing under the table. It, this wow. part gave me two of my favorite quotes of this entire thing. Poopies. He goes, I literally <laughs> thought the world was ending oh, for yeah. a second. <laughs> In the most genuine way possible. <laughs> like, And I could totally understand why. Oh, and then you had, yeah. you had Aaron. Danger Aaron when yeah. he's being interviewed. And he's like, at that moment... I truly realized we were fucked. Yeah. And he says it so candidly as and well. He's right. This this That's set the, the precedence for the whole movie. Yeah. And it set these guys on fucking high alert, which made them so stressed and made us get so much more enjoyment about this whole you thing. Can I see fucking it. love you this. It's a perfect see it way to in, do it. In Aaron's eyes because they cut to him as he's giving the interview and saying, I knew we were fucked. He, his eyes, he's just darting all around. He's like, nothing is sacred. Cause even he's walking around. He's like, this is a, it's a meeting about COVID. He's like, what, what does it even mean anymore? What does anything yeah. even mean anymore? <laughs> he <is> like, mad. 
He's asking him, aren't we supposed to take this shit seriously? Yeah. And I mean, with Aaron, it's like, guys, there's been that question floating around is, does Aaron get bullied on set? There's been a Steve-O podcast episode about this. I'm just, whatever side of the fence you're on, I'm still on the side that says, yes, he's gotten bullied because this sells it for me right here. The guy, he's the only guy who's not laughing about the sketch. He's <laughs> pissed off because he knows... Like, he's taking it personally, right? Because he feels like, dude, they do this shit to me all the time. We're getting started already. Dude, this guy's he's definitely the bottom of the totem pole of the crew. I'm sorry to say it. And it's just his reaction. Tell It tells all for me. It may, it may also just be like, yes, I do think we have some strict examples of him having been bullied in the past, in particular in the Jackass TV series. But maybe it is just a matter of him taking things too seriously and that's why it, it appears be. that base that way sometimes you know that but that is also his shtick the fact that he gets like preston to that extra level of being upset is kind of what we like about him now especially now yeah. that we know how badass he is um well he, he, and he even said in the podcast i was listening to when he was on steve-o's he said he understood that was his role and played into yeah, it yeah. you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, that yeah. that's kind of everybody has their different things um from here though it's it's funny how they just kind of show a few different montages of just different pranks just to kind of set the yes. tone for it. They had that white powder stuff fall on everybody. White powder which, stuff, Chris. Yeah. What? So what happened to them? They were sitting by the fucking wall, and all of a sudden, this white powder exploded Chris, everywhere. Chris, what what was that prank called? What did they all get? I can't tell. Antiques. Chris is- yes, they all got oh, antiques. I missed that part. <laughs> oh my okay. god dude go. do you, did you notice i don't know if you've seen it in the smoke like as it's like settling dave england literally has his dukes up and he's sw- he's like ready for reward like he <laughs> yeah, can't yeah, see yeah. but he's like i've been here before <laughs> i don't want anybody coming near me and i'm fucking ready for it i'm not going down i mean i, I don't know what's happening but i am going down swinging, yeah. was that you know, dave because so i, I saw preston me. preston was, was sitting there with both his fists out at the end like i fucking dare someone to come near me Fight or dude flight, go man. back and watch dave dave you have to see it it's so, you, you'll love it mikey it's so <laughs> it's dave amazing. england and just the way he's moving is so skittish like he's so freaked out and he's just like i don't fucking know what to do i love that part yeah well, guys, we can't shoot man on the street anymore, as we said, you know, with yep. COVID and whatnot. Let's take it out on the cast. That's become the mentality here. And uh, we got Poopies in front of a big fountain at uh, Universal <laughs> Studios, and he's just doing like a, a interview about, you know, his role here at, at uh, Jackass as a new member. And we got Knoxville sneaking up behind him in the background and... Like he's got this window with a curtain on it that he's going to stick his hand out. Like he's, he's got all these props and shit. He's just going in for a slap. Like, honestly, he didn't even need it guys. Poopies is too dumb. It doesn't, he could have just walked up and slapped him. (laughs) He wouldn't have noticed. Uh, And he gets a good slap on him. We get a slow-mo replay and his, his face just fucking, it like almost envelops Knoxville's hand. The skin is just like elastic. I love, I love those slow motion shots. I I Um, felt like my, my insides were being tickled at this moment when yeah. when you're watching johnny like go up behind him and like get everything ready it was just it was hilarious and adorable i i loved every second of that one but uh nobody seems to know when there are pranks you know what's real and what's not on set we man can't even get interviewed he's too nerv- nervous like he's trying to answer a question he just kind of stops and look around he's like this is just too too tense i can't do this they go, they uh, roll it back to like, I think it's like seven months or 11 months earlier or something. And this is where they show that Dave England was not the only one to get the pig cum dumped on him. It happened to Wee Man too. He got the cum <laughs> as well. And it's the same thing. It's like, it's like watching the exact same footage. It's just like someone went in and uh, I just, I like knew it was coming because Chris kind of tipped us off. But when you see it, it's just like, okay. Now I believe that Dave is not the only one, you know, five gallons of horse semen. And I just wanted to say that this feels like, it feels like such a repeat of what we saw with Dave. It's almost like one of those video games where you can go in and like redo the cutscenes yourself with different oh. characters. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it's almost the same reaction. Knoxville runs in. He's the first one to say he's so eager to tell them that it was five gallons of horse semen. And then Wee Man starts spitting up as soon as he hears what it is, just like Dave does. And it's just so funny to see the reaction is like no different. And then of course he tries to go after Knoxville who... I don't know if he's just more wise this time, but he's got a taser and he, he strikes back, which I, I thought was good. That, like, how helpless do you feel? You just got jizzed on by a, a, a nameless boar or three, 
and you go to attack the person who pranked you and he hits you with a taser like like checkmate knoxville you got me I, it's it's funny like yeah. jay you mentioned that he had the same reaction as dave i think of everything dave definitely had the best reaction of all the boar come takes uh because he was kind of having fun with it and was also bewildered by it uh I think I think Wee Man just is almost over it. I've said this before in another episode, and it's fine because it brings a really funny energy to it. But he's just like, fucking okay, what? Yep, yeah, pig cum. All right, whatever. Whereas Dave England was like, oh, what was that? It was pig cum. Oh shit. Oh man, that's fucking crazy. Wee yeah. Man's like, I just oh, want to go yeah, home. Give sure. me my pig. Give me my check. That's why Dave's was in the movie, right? Like, yes, he, exactly. Hands down, was the best for sure. I totally agree. But you know what, Jay, like I know there's there's more to talk about specifically in the pranking of this one, but I think let's uh, we should stop it here. I don't think, you know, what we, we always talk about this before we start recording. Chris always thinks it's going to be a much quicker episode. We knew that it was going to be a multi part uh, episode. We wanted to get a gauge for how long we would take on each stunt. I, I we're definitely going to go three, maybe even four parts with this one, just like we did with the movies. It turns out it takes us about 50 minutes to an hour to talk about 25 minutes of, of jackass content. I don't want to talk about the next one just yet, which is Dark Shark and the Bear, because there's uh, so yeah. much we can talk about there, even though it is a prank and does kind of roll into this segment. I think it would be fun to start off next week's episode by by focusing on that. Yeah. And if you have a phobia of a phobia of bears, just uh, wear a plaid shirt for next episode. You'll be all right. But until then, let's uh, let's do our our MVP and uh, Chris has sadly left us, which I think this is hilarious because the last thing we heard from him was that uh, the boar cum on leather <laughs> really hit the spot for him. And now he's just gone. We don't know what happened to him. He had to make a quick unplanned trip to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah right after that, apparently. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. MVPs, LVPs. That sounds good. Uh, uh, MVP. You know who my MVP of this one is going to be? It's going to be a combination MVP and it's going to go towards Jeff Tremaine and Spike Jones, nice. who I have to assume were at the helm in deciding to make this a more of a documentary and making of than what the traditional 4.5s or 0.5 movies are. What a great idea. Like we said at the beginning, I didn't know I wanted this. And once I saw it, I did. I still didn't know I wanted it. But now that I've seen the whole thing, it was exactly what I needed. Nice. You know what, Mikey, I think I'm going to give it to Rachel on this one because I was just impressed with how well she handled day one of shooting. Like that really impressed me because look, I, I know how the, the climate is today. Dudes and girls, we're all supposed to be equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But you put one girl in a room full of dudes and like a handful of them got their dick and balls out. It's, you can't tell me that's <laughs> not a little awkward for her. And she just goes in there and fucking nails it. Like she comes out and she's like, yeah, I'm ready to do this shit. Let's go. So. I think that was uh, that impressed me the most in this part of the movie, and uh, I'm glad that uh, she's part of the team. And plus, uh, she allowed us to talk about her body and her lady parts on this podcast, and whether or not she should be showing them. Uh, hey, <laughs> did she allow us to do? That? I don't know, I don't not know. really. Uh, but you know what? We did it anyway. And if you want to talk about my body parts on the show anytime, hey, feel free. You have my permission. Uh. LVP, let's go with, uh, I'm going to go with the top half of Poopy's Popsicle because that thing just got lost and is oh, probably dude. still lost in the ether. That thing is the, is the, is the, the least valuable player from this episode because, uh, oh my God, uh, what, what, a, what a, a tough track that thing had to take. I'm going, I'm going Steve-O for the LVP on this one for one reason. It's one thing you said that stuck out to me. The Dude, surfboard? Just it's time to just tone it down with the plugs. <laughs> Put the surfboard away. I know, I know you're doing the side hustle. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to make something out of your brand. I get it, Steve O, but you're the only guy on the cast that does this shit. Just leave it for outside of the movie. That's all I'm sure. saying. Sure. That's fair. That's fair. I like that. I like that. Two two very well earned, albeit very different LVPs for the end of this episode. All right, and that brings us to the end of this part one. Holy shit, we got a lot of movie left to go. Uh, hopefully Chris will be back to join Hell us yeah. next week, and hopefully all of you will be as well, because God damn it, if you're not here, what are we doing? I really don't know. I just I just mentioned to Mikey a moment ago that um, we, had, uh, we talk about pig cum and dudes getting fucking enemas with hot sauce, and this is, we do this every <laughs> week. Somehow I don't know how I got into this predicament, yet I continue to get myself into it. 
every week. So we'll see you next Thursday. But make sure, make sure, uh, send us all your, oh, uh, shit, your thoughts, please. comments, questions, all that stuff on Jackass 4.5. This is the call to arms. Uh, we recorded this right after finishing up with Jackass 4 because we couldn't, could, or forever because we couldn't wait to start it. So we're going to start collecting the questions and we will start addressing those in the future episodes at Jackass Pod on social media and Jackass Pod at gmail.com if you want to type something a little bit longer to us. Yeah, you see, I'm so jammed up about the whole surfboard thing. I forgot about the end of show <laughs> plugs. How ironic. All right. That's enough for now. We'll see you next week. Bye. I'm Jason Wellwood. Bye. I'm Chris Aaronworth. Bye. I'm Mikey Aaronworth. And this has been Jackassed. Is, is your brother Jabba the Hutt? Mm, the forces. Oh, that's not Jabba, is oh, it? That's Yoda. <laughs> it's all right. You tried. It's okay. Do or do not. There is no try, Jay. Exactly. <laughs> Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Get into it!